uh, so this week we will talk about back to data, um, and also specifically we are looking we are going to look at the GPS data. So the full name of the GPS is called a um, global positioning system, and actually there are more and more um, similar type of products like GPS uh, now available. But the GPS is uh, is the oldest. Uh, such type of the positioning system, right, and uh, data, and that data have has been widely used on so many devices like our cell phones, um, and our smart watches, etc. Uh, so and we use GPS a lot, like uh, navigation, um, and also locate our position, <coughs> etc. Uh, so this week we'll talk about talks we'll talk about GPS. And we will have a very short lecture uh, because um, in the past years we will have a, a, a lab that will go out and also collect GPS data on our own. But this semester, since we're going to do everything online, so collecting uh, GPS data will, is optional. So um, I will provide the, the video tutorial that uh, shows how you can collect GPS data with an app and that is called OSM end. Um, and so it is optional. So if you have time and if you want to try to collect some GPS data on your own, so please feel free to do that. And otherwise, you can just simply use uh, the demo data that I uploaded on Canvas so for, the, for this week's lab. Okay, uh, so before I start, let's just review uh, the back to data. So <clears throat> the back data is, a, is another yet important uh, spatial data model or the spatial data type. So last week we talked about rest data and also we, uh, we have looked at the air photos and also satellite images. Um, this week we are looking at the back to data and also we will look at the GPS point. So those so GPS data can now, uh, is, is one commonly used uh, vector data tab. And also later this semester, we are looking at ship files, which is also the most commonly used uh, vector data type. Uh, so here, if you think about that, we have talked uh, in the beginning. So vector data use uh, points and also their associated coordinates to represent uh, the spatial features. So uh, <clears throat> it is different from the Rust data. So Rust data use a set of continuous cells uh, to represent the features. Um, but for vector data, we are using discrete set of the points. Okay, so x, y coordinates. And, and uh, we have three types of those spatial features. So we have point, uh, we have the line feature and also we have the polygon feature. So in Rust data, it's just simply pixels. Um, but in back data, we have three types of the uh, spatial features, point, line, and also polygon. And so point is a zero dimension object that contains a single pair of coordinates. So a point is just uh, one single point that has X and Y. Okay. And each type of spatial feature has non-spatial information. So those are the uh, attributes. So, though, uh, so for example, we can have the name of this point. We can have the type of this point, etc. Okay. Uh, so that is the point. The line feature is a set of the uh, of the points. Okay. And it consists of one dimension object. So let's say for example, it has uh, two points, okay, point A and also point B, point B. And each single point uh, has its own coordinates, so X, Y for point A, and also X and Y for point B. Um, and this entire feature can also has attribute. Um, so for example, name, uh, type, so this might be a road network or road segment, okay, so uh, the lens, etc. The third one is a po called polygon. So polygon is a two-dimensional features that uh, so it's it has multiple points and also those points will look back and created 
and create a closed feature. So for example, here we have three points. Okay, and each single point has x its own coordinates. So x y x y and x and also y. Okay, so this will be a, a two dimension feature, and, and this feature <coughs> can also have attributes like uh, the area and also and also other and also other non spatial information about this. Uh, Polygon. Okay, and we have seen this table before. So those are three types of the uh, backed data. So point, those single point. Okay, so they all have coordinates, and also you have those non-spatial information. Lines or polylines, those those non-spatial information. So those are the uh, a set of points. And polygons is also a set of points, but they are closed features. Okay, so they are closed features. So uh, the points will look back, and you can also have those non spatial information. Okay, like type, status, if you're representing the land. Okay, um, and also the similar as we said to the Rust data, so VAC data also have some advantages and also disadvantage. Uh, so those are from our textbook. Uh, so the first advantage of, of vector data is that it, it, it may look like pretty than Rust data. Okay, uh, so this is very, <laughs> um, I would say, subjective. So it might be some personal opinions. Um, so when you create maps, so some people may prefer using vector data because you can change the colors, you can add more um, visual effects. However, for the Rust data, so you have limited options. Um, they tend to be more accurate. Okay, so when we you represent the uh, the real object, so for example, uh, if you represent your road network, okay, and so you, you can use line features because you have more choice, and um, and if you are representing uh, a land use, and you can have you can use polygons. Okay, so you can use polygons. Uh, however, if you are using Rust data, so then they can only be cells. Okay, so for for example, if I using a Rust data set to represent a road network, okay, and you can say okay, so that cell is a road, that cell is a road, that cell is a road, that cell is a road. Okay, so in that case, if you can, if you look at those two, um. Data models, so for example, representing road or representing the land use, etc. So, uh, VAC data can be more accurate. Okay, and also uh, it's easy to scale the data. Okay, so it's easy to scale the data. So, if you remember that for Rust data, if you change the scales, uh, you may lose pixels. Um, however, for the for the VAC data, so uh, if you change the scales, so uh, those are still those are the x y the coordinates, so you will not lose uh, those resolution. Um, and also, uh, you can use different type of the back data to represent the objects at different scale. So, for example, uh, if you look at the the building, okay, so at a very large scale, uh, you can use a polygon. Uh, however, so if you look at the very small scale, so like if you at, look at the entire country of the United States, and then in that case, a building might can be can be can be, can be represented as a point. Okay, so you can abstract the feature by using different type of the backed data, uh, and the data structure can be more compact. So uh, you are uh, that will save your disk space. So and the back data tend to be smaller than the Rust data set. And also, back data also maintain the topological information. So topological information is kind of relationship of those uh, spatial features. So for example, we have two polygons, okay? And so those two polygons may share the same line feature, okay? And also we have, uh, 
a road that intersect with this polygon. So that means those uh, those the road and also the line feature and also its polygon feature may share this point. Okay, so those are those relationship are what we call the topological information. And because of the topological information, the spatial analysis um, can, will be simplified when we apply spatial analysis on the vector data model. Okay, uh, so if you remember that for RAS dataset, there are many spatial analysis that do not support RAS data model. Uh, so most spatial analysis only support the vector dataset. Okay, because we they contain the topological information. Well, uh, the disadvantage will be that the data structure is more complicated. Okay, then the Rust data set. So if you think about Rust data set, it's just a set of continuous pixels. Uh, so the devices that capture Rust data set, like images and also air photos, will be much cheaper. However, if you want to create a vector data set, so uh, the process will be a little bit more complicated. So you can either digitalize, digitalize those vector data uh, or vectorize those vector data. So so the data structure will be more complicated.